Just going to work out two more examples and then call it a day. So this reaction right here begins with 51.3 grams of iron and 37.5 grams of oxygen. And we need to answer some questions about it. So let me get a pen. First of all, what's the limiting reactant? Well, to find the limiting reactant, all you have to do, I'm actually going to show you another way that you can use to find the limiting reactant if you don't want to go through the double stoichiometry of converting each reactant into a product. You can actually just pick one of the reactants and convert it to the other reactant and then compare. So let me show you that method just in case you know you decide you like that one better, you can use it. So since 51.03 grams of iron was the first thing I was given, that's what I'm going to start with. and I'm gonna convert this into an amount of oxygen. So molar mass of iron is 55.85 grams. Mole ratio for every four moles of iron, we're going to get, or need, sorry, need three moles of oxygen. And then to convert oxygen into mass, each mole of oxygen has a mass of 32.0 grams. And then you solve this and get 51.03 times 3 times 32. We're going to divide that by what's on bottom, 55.85 times 4. And I get 21.9 grams of oxygen. So this is how much oxygen I would need to use to react with all of the iron. To figure out which of these two guys is limiting and which one is excess, I'm going to compare this number that I just calculated to the number of oxygen, to the number of grams of oxygen that I actually have. And if you notice, the number that I need is significantly less than the number that I have. So that means oxygen is going to be our excess react it because we'll have some left over and the iron will all be used up so it is our limiting reactant. Makes it kind of nice for the next question, how many grams of excess reactant will be left over? Well, all we have to do is take the number of grams of oxygen that we have, 37.5, and subtract the number of grams of oxygen that we're going to use, 21.9, to get our answer. So 37.5 minus 21.9. Yeah, you can probably pretty easily do that one in your head, but my head is so stopped up right now, I don't think I could. So 15.6 grams of O2 will be left over. And then for the last one, how many grams of iron three oxide can be formed? Well, we're going to start our stoichiometry with our limiting reactant. Uh, by the way, if, you know, we had calculated out that this number down here was higher than what we have, well then that would make this guy our limiting reactant. So, you know, like let's just say for argument's sake that when we calculated this out we actually got like 40 grams of oxygen. Well that means we don't have enough oxygen to react with all of the iron. So that would have made oxygen the limiting reactant. That was just a, for argument's sake, you know, what if the opposite happened? What if you didn't have enough? I'm sure a couple of y'all were wondering that. Um, so let's just answer that question. But, you know, Going on to number three. So we're going to do our limiting reactant of 51.03 grams of iron. And we're going to convert that to grams of iron 3 oxide, also known as rust. Uh, so molar mass is still the same. Then our mole ratio is going to be our four moles of iron to two moles of rust. And then we need our molar mass of rust. So each mole of Fe2O3 has a mass of, let's see, two times 55.85 plus 48. 159.7. So from here, we just plug this in, 51.03 times 2 times 159.7. Divide that by everything that's on the bottom, 55.85 and 4 equals 
Let's see, we're allowed four sig figs, so yeah, 72.96. Uh, and that is grams of Fe2. Last example that we're going to work out here. We're going to oxidize some aluminum. And I would like to know which reactant is limiting if we have 0.32 moles of aluminum and 0.26 moles of oxygen. So, uh, since I just want to know about reactants and I don't really care about how much product is produced, I'm going to use the way that I just showed you how to work this out. So I'm going to take 0.32 moles of aluminum and I'm going to convert that to moles of oxygen. Nice thing is I'm in moles, so I don't even have to deal with molar mass here. I can just go straight into mole ratios. So four moles of aluminum to every three moles of oxygen, and that is going to be equal to 0.32 times three divided by four. <coughs> Sorry. I know that's just beautiful. 0.24 moles of O2. So I compare. And as I'm comparing, I see that this is less than this, which means that I have plenty of oxygen, and I'm going to run out of aluminum first. So aluminum is going to be my limiting reactant. And that's all the question asks for, so that's all I'm going to do. Second question asks for, let me erase my pen here. How many moles of Al2O3 are formed from the reaction of this many moles of O2 and that many moles of aluminum? So now that I'm caring about product, I'm going to do the other method where I take each amount of reactant and convert it to my product. So starting with O2, 6.38 times 10 to the negative 3. Don't let scientific notation scare you. It's just another number. Uh, mole ratio for oxygen to aluminum oxide is going to be 3 moles of aluminum to every 2 moles of aluminum oxide. Let's solve that in just a second. Uh, set up the other stoichiometry, 9.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of aluminum. And we're going to convert this to aluminum oxide, so this is a 4 to 2 mole ratio. Okay, plug both of these in, 6.38 E negative 3 times 2 divided by 3, and I get 4.25 times 10 to the negative 3 moles Al2O3. And then for this one down here, 9.15 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, times 2 divided by 4. Yeah, I could have reduced the 2 and the 4, but, you know, yeah. And here I get 4.58 times 10 to the negative 3 moles Al2O3. Now all I have to do is look at these two numbers. Which one is lower? Well, 4.25 is less than 4.58. So, bam, that one's lower, which means that the number of moles of Al2O3 formed is this little guy right here. I don't know if I put a third question in here. Or not. I sure did. If this many grams of aluminum and that many grams of oxygen are available, which reactant is limiting? Again, I'm just dealing with reactant. It didn't ask me anything about how much product is formed. So I'm going to do the new method that I showed you and just convert from grams of aluminum to grams of oxygen. Oops. 3.17 grams of aluminum. Convert that to oxygen. Aluminum has a molar mass of 26.98 grams per mole. Mole ratio, 4 moles of aluminum to 3 moles of oxygen. And if you don't like doing this way, you can still take both of these amounts and convert them to amount of product and then compare how much product you make at the end. That's totally fine. Uh, it's You're still going to get the right answer. This to me is just, you know, one less step. And the fewer the steps, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, last thing is the molar mass of oxygen. Plug this into our trusty little calculator, 3.17 times 3 times 32. Divide that by 26.98 and 4. And I get 2.82. So compare this number to how much oxygen I have, and you'll notice 
I don't have 2.82 grams of oxygen. I only have 2.55 grams of oxygen. So that means this guy, our oxygen, since we don't have enough of it, is going to be the limiting reactant. If you have any more questions, feel free to come on in for tutoring, and I'll answer you know whatever you got. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow.